In today's Lightroom video, I'm going to show you how you can edit amazing macro photos by taking this raw file right here and turning it into a photo like this at the end in just about 10 minutes. Now the first thing you want to consider is to crop your picture and especially if you shoot something like a bee, it's going to be almost impossible to get the perfect framing within the camera. Then I'm also going to bring down the highlights by 100 as well as raise the shadows by quite a bit and that will give me a lot of detail within both areas and a really nice starting point. Then I definitely do think that the picture is a bit too bright so I'm going to bring down the exposure by quite a bit but despite the overall look being a bit better it also kind of muffles the overall dynamic of the lighting so you can fix that by bringing up the whites and that will give back a lot of the dynamic. Then in terms of the blacks and contrast these are very closely interlinked and I would absolutely suggest you to use them together. Now the first option is to add contrast and go into the plus blacks and that will give you a very soft picture but at the same time very contrasty. Then the other option is to go into the minus contrast and the minus blacks that will mainly give you a very harsh picture. So in macro shots it's usually a better idea to go into the plus blacks and at the same time into the plus uh, contrast. Now of course you can also adjust the sliders individually but I really think that's a nice way to move them together. Then another very important thing is the clarity and here a lot of people will just go into the plus clarity but especially in macro shots which is usually a very delicate thing, a very delicate subject, you don't want to exaggerate all of these textures even more but you rather want to work with the mood and go a little bit into the minus clarity, works a lot better here. Then in terms of the vibrance and saturation, definitely up to you, if you should draw it can actually work to add a little bit of vibrance and saturation, which of these sliders work better for your picture is really very dependent on the actual picture itself so I would just suggest you to play around with both sliders and get a nice in between of both. Then to the tonal curve here you can bring up the highlights and that will just increase the overall dynamic even more. It's very similar to the whites rather than to the highlights in the basics adjustments and then with the rest of these sliders I would suggest you to just play around with them and at the end stick with whatever you like best. It's once again very different from picture to picture. And if I show you real quick from before to after, a very small difference but it does help the picture. Then going down, HSL tool we're gonna have to skip because it has a very subtle difference in terms of the color. Oh and by the way, this picture is actually in focus, it just has a very narrow depth of field because I had to shoot it at a 5.6, otherwise I would have had to crank up the ISO way too far. So I would have loved to see the entire B in focus, but it's super hard to shoot Bs and this is one of the better shots that I got. Anyways, let's go into the split toning, go to this little box right here next to the highlights and here you can choose any color you would like. And usually I would go for a kind of a warmer tone, but in this case, I'm actually going to go for a little bit of a lightish blue tone. And you want to make sure that you have your saturation to a very reasonable value, so you don't want to just completely blow your picture, but just a little bit can actually work. And you can do the exact same thing with the shadows, but I would suggest you go in a, to a little bit of a different color with those, and I might even go a bit into the warm tones right here. And from before split toning to after, it is a bit cooler, but at the same time there's some nice differentiation from the bright tones to the very shadowy areas which have a little bit of a different color. Once again very subtle, but it does work in my opinion. Then to the detail tool, adding about 50 to 70 sharpness works quite a lot of the times and bringing the masking slider to the right while holding down the ALT or CMD key is very important. So you want to make sure that you only select the areas that you actually want to be sharpened. Then I'm also going to bring up the color noise reduction to 100. This will get rid of the purple and green sensor noise, really only has positive impact. But I'll have to elaborate on that in a future video. Down here I'm going to remove the chromatic aberration and this will just get rid of the purple and green fringing on the high contrast edges. And usually I would also enable profile corrections, but since I shot this with some extension tubes, it won't really work, but rather distort even more. Then down here, transform, really nothing you have to worry about. Now effects, this is actually a great thing, because here you can add some vignetting, and vignetting just makes um, the corners darker, and you can also fine tune some of these other sliders, but pretty much what this does is create more attention towards the center of the picture. 
Then down here at the camera calibration, the profile will actually have a huge difference in quite a lot of the cases. And this is an option that you will only have if you shoot in RAW, so it's definitely worth to do so. But what this very much will do is change the overall color and the overall look of your picture. So it's definitely worth to play around with it and just see if there's anything you like better than the Adobe standard. And in this case, I might even go for camera landscape, you know, it's the really nothing about the actual names themselves. Just look about the actual effect on the picture. And I think this really has a huge difference and makes the color pop quite a bit. Then in terms of the primary colors, I'm going to real quick go into these as well and just change around some of these and just fine tune the colors. Now a thing to be aware of here is that if you choose um, or move around any of the sliders, then it will also adjust all of the other colors. So that's why it's called primary colors, just something to be aware of. But here again, just move around the sliders and go with whatever you like best at the end. So then I think, you know, maybe just a little bit more saturation here. But here's before any camera calibration adjustments, here's after. It won't have always such a huge difference, but in this case it did. So it's definitely worth to play around with. And I think I'm done with the entire global adjustments now. Let's just quickly see if I forgot anything. And yeah, I actually forgot them to move around the color temperature. Now this is of course a fairly important thing and I mean, I think I'm gonna go a little bit warmer here, although nothing crazy. And then with the overall tint, maybe just a bit into the minus. So let's just refine some of that stuff real quick because I think maybe even a little bit more mines exposure could work and in exchange bring up the whites even more. And then, yeah, I think I'm really done with the global adjustments. So now let's go into the local adjustments and here I'm just gonna grab a graduated filter first to wall, go into the minus exposure and drag one over the right side of the picture and make a very, very soft edge. This is very important. And then at the same time, grab another one, this time with plus exposure and just drag it in parallel over the entire other side of the picture. And that will just create a little bit of differentiation in terms of the lighting. Then I'm gonna jump straight away into the rail filters. And here you can add dark and burning, which is making individual parts either darker or brighter. And in this kind of picture, you know, in macro shots, it won't have a huge difference, but it is still worth to at least play around with it a little bit. And I'm just gonna add a filter right here. Wanna make sure that your feather is at 100, that you invert the mask as well. And then just add plus whites, plus exposure a little bit. And you can go over some areas of your picture that you might think are a little bit boring. And you can just add some additional interest in terms of the lighting there. So once again, in macro shots, it won't have a huge difference. And honestly, beyond these maybe three filters, I don't think there's really too much potential for it but it can be, you know, in some pictures it can work better than in others. So it's once again, definitely worth to play around with. So in terms of the plus exposure, I'm done, but now I'm also gonna add some minus exposure filters. This is a thing that you can do to add even more contrast just in certain areas. You can also mix this with minus blacks and plus contrast. If you would like to learn more about Dartrum Burning, I've made a complete video about this. The link will be somewhere in the description. And you can just right click and duplicate the filter and then drag it over another area. It is quite important that you still have a bit of contrast within your picture, even though you might want your entire picture to be relatively soft. It can be quite boring and quite flat looking if you don't have at least a little bit of contrast. So I think that's actually pretty much it. Let's go back into the cropping just to refine some of this stuff. And here, yeah, I do think I'm gonna crop it even tighter, just maybe something like that. And that way we have even more attention on the actual B, but also less of the distraction of the sky towards the left and maybe I'll have to refine that even more. So there's really no sky in there. So I think that's pretty much it. Now, once again, it's not ideal because this bee isn't sharp entirely. You know what, actually, I think I'm gonna take the extra minute and go into the spot removal tool here. Make sure you're on a heel, make sure your feather is at about 50, and past the t be at 100, and the size just at the actual size that you want to remove the area of. So here, as you can see, there's kind of a reflection on the B and it really doesn't work that well. So I'm going to try to remove that. 
and it actually did a really good job here. Let's see what it does right there. If it doesn't do a good job, like here, right here, I mean, it looks terrible, you can just press down your front slash key on your keyboard and it will select another source, or you can just right click and select new source. And sometimes it will take a few tries, but eventually it will probably get a quite good, um, a quite good replacement for that area. And I'm even gonna do the same thing with this area right here, and you can even from hand just drag the area over another area that you might want to select. So if Lightroom really doesn't find anything, you can do it manually as well. And maybe I'm actually gonna add another one just for this area as well, and it did a pretty good job. So that's pretty much the entire picture. Now I know this isn't, once again, the best possible picture, but this is mainly about the editing rather than the picture itself. And if we look at the, the raw file right here without any editing, it is really quite flat, quite uh, kind of chaotic. And afterwards, it's really very vibrant, but at the same time, it's not overdone, if you ask me. If you think it is overdone, you can always go into the saturation, for example, in the HSL tool, and just go a little bit down with the yellow tonalities, for example. But I actually like the picture as a whole. And I especially like the lighting difference from the top left being very bright to the bottom right being very dark. So I do like the picture at the end. And if you've enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate if you could take a second to leave a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot and really helps me to see which kind of videos I should make in the future. And of course, you can also subscribe for various different videos about Lightroom and photography, where I also go a lot more in depth and take a lot more time than I did in this particular video. So thank you very much for watching, take care and keep on editing great pictures.